Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft's Surface Book. Actually, we'll be doing two things. The first thing is we're gonna be recapping the Surface Book and my use of it for the past year, giving you an update on my experience in using it as my primary work computer for 12 months. And then next, we'll also be reviewing Microsoft's update to the Surface Book, the Surface Book i7 with the performance base. Now, if you watch our videos, if you watch our podcasts, you may have seen the Surface Book pop up in videos here and there because it's been my go-to laptop for this year. It's my daily work computer that I take to the office and it's what I take for travel. It's not the most powerful Ultrabook or the lightest one on the market, but it's been my favorite to use. I love the three by two aspect ratio touchscreen, which you're not gonna find in most laptops today. It's 3000 pixels by 2000 pixels, which is enough pixel density to let me run Windows at 200% scaling, that's integer scaling, and still have enough screen real estate to run all of my windows side by side and even do video editing. I love the glass trackpad, which I think is best in class for a Windows laptop. I like the keyboard, and of course, I love the unique versatility of the detachable screen. Microsoft calls this the clipboard. If you remember from last year's review, the unique thing about the Surface Book is that Microsoft packed most of the processing, most of the stuff that makes a laptop a laptop into this thin screen. And that includes a CPU, the RAM, the storage, and some of the battery. In the keyboard section, in the base, what you're gonna find is additional battery for battery life and also a discrete GPU for some of the models, the i7 models. Now, some things I've learned over the past year of using Surface Book. The pen, it has that digitizer, that Entrick technology that Microsoft acquired a couple years ago. I found myself using this less than I expected. I do use it from time to time to draw an outlook or one note and also take notes, and, but I'm not an artist. I'm not gonna open Photoshop and use this to draw layers. And also the reason I find myself not using it that much is because it just doesn't attach to the service book as securely as I like. There is that magnetic attachment on the side and you can tell it's pretty sturdy. But when, once you put this in a shoulder bag or in a backpack, I find the pen more often than not gets disconnected, drops off, falls off, and falls to the bottom of my backpack. So what instead, I've taken to putting this pen on the side pocket in my backpack and only taking it out when I really wanna use it to make a diagram and use it in clipboard mode. I actually find myself rarely using it just in clipboard mode either. I'm carrying it as a full laptop. I'm not going on trips just with a clipboard because the battery life on the top part isn't enough to actually travel with. It's only good enough to walk around from one side of the office to another to show someone, someone something in a meeting, a web page, or a drawing. But I'm, for the most part, I'm using it in this L-shaped configuration as a laptop. And even rarely, more rarely so, as a display, flipping the clipboard around and having the screen bent this way as an angled drawing surface. One of the questions people also asked was because of the hinge design of the surface, whether dust would fall into that gap between the screen and the keyboard. And I'm happy to report that just as I expected last year, dust has not been a problem at all. I carry this around all the time in my backpack and just underneath my arms, and I've never had to open the Surface Book and wipe off the screen or the keyboard because of dust problems. But there have been some issues. The Surface Book, unfortunately, had been a little buggy at launch, and a lot of those bugs stem from this detachable base. Occasionally, it would, I would open the Surface Book, turn it on, and the keyboard wouldn't respond. I'd have to detach the tablet, detach the clipboard, pop it back in to get the keyboard to respond, or even hard reset the laptop in order to get it to respond. Thankfully, Microsoft has acknowledged some of these problems and for the most part, fixed them with Windows 10 updates and patches to the Surface Book to a point where I'm not getting any of these problems. Maybe one in 20 uses do I have to actually reset the Surface Book because it's not performing the way I expect it. Battery life has also decreased over time to a point where I'm only getting about six to seven hours of productive use from this with a bunch of Chrome web browser tabs open and also doing regular image editing work in Lightroom room or Photoshop. That's a little bit lower than that 10, 11 hours of battery life I was getting last year. Overall, no regrets about using this as my primary laptop. It's still one of the most beautiful and functional Ultrabooks that's been out in the past year, which leads us to today, because there's a whole new selection of Ultrabooks and laptops for this holiday season. 
And Microsoft has not announced a new Surface Book 2, a full follow-up sequel. What they have done is have this upgrade to just the base. They're calling it the performance base. And it's not an accessory sold by itself. You have to buy it as a full Surface Book option. And the big difference with the performance base this year is the GPU. Microsoft has put in an NVIDIA GTX 965M. Now the 965M is a mobile Maxwell part. It's not a Pascal chip. And like the new Surface Studio, they probably locked down the specs on these devices before the 10 series NVIDIA parts were available. So that's also a little unfortunate. But the good news is the 965M makes this a viable gaming machine. Last year, I said the Surface Book wasn't gonna be good for gaming. It was good for 3D work, uh, Maya, but you could maybe only play games like Rocket League or Zen Pinball on this. This year, you can even play games like Call of Duty Infinite Warfare uh, and at pretty good resolutions. I tested a bunch of games at 1920 by 1200, not at the native 3000 by 2000. And, but at 1920 by 1200, I was able to get 50 to 60 FPS in very high settings in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, uh, Firewatch, and Inside. Now, when you're running games using this higher power hungry part, you will hear the fans spin up and there is a new fan system, a new design to the base of this. They've made it a little thicker and the keyboard is now at a little bit of an angle. And if you look along the top ridge here above the function keys, you do see an exhaust for a new fan cooling system. And that actually starts revving up once you load games in and you can actually feel the heat on the keyboard itself. Um, the CPU isn't improved at all. It's still using Intel's Skylake 6th generation CPU. It's a Skylake 6600U part, a dual core i7 part with four threads with included hyper-threading. It's not KB Lake. It's not the 7500U, which you're gonna find in some of the competitors to the Surface Book. Now, that's a little unfortunate too because KB Lake, even though they're both 14 nanometer um, Intel process parts, you can actually maintain higher clock speeds at load with KB Lake to a point where it's 15, 10 to 15% faster than the comparable Skylake part. And I could really use that when using this laptop for video editing. Uh, battery life is also supposed to be increased because they pack more battery into the base. Microsoft claimed 16 hours of battery life. And when I asked them how they got to that 16 hours, they said with local video playback, screen at medium brightness and also connected to a Wi-Fi network. Trying those settings and loading up Media Player Classic, putting up a 1080p movie on this, I was really only able to get around 10, 11 hours of video playback. Now when you do video streaming in a web browser over YouTube or Vimeo, that battery life drops down to about nine hours. And then when you're also running in more intensive tests like video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro, that drops down to about three and a half hours. So the added battery capacity here really didn't end up making a big difference. Now also, the good thing news is that it's not much heavier. It's a little heavier, 3.6 pounds as opposed to three and a half pounds as a full laptop, and that's not really noticeable at all from an ergonomics standpoint. And even though Microsoft made all these changes to the performance space in terms of adding, adding more battery and the new GPU, they didn't add more ports. There's no USB-C and no Thunderbolt 3 support. Microsoft is still relying on their proprietary Surface connector, which also works as the charging uh, port, which then can connect to their $200 Surface dock accessory. That's the only way you're going to be able to plug in additional two or more monitors and get additional USB ports or uh, Ethernet jack on one dock. And that's a little unfortunate because it's expensive. Uh, this is a $2,400 laptop at the base spec, which is a couple hundred dollars more than the maxed out Surface Book from last year. And at that $2,400, you're only getting eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. If I was gonna get a Surface Book, I'd want 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of the flash storage. And to get that, you have to pay an additional $400. That takes it to $2,800, which at that point, you might as well get like a gaming laptop that has a full Pascal chip. Uh, it's also unfortunate that Microsoft isn't selling that performance base as a separate accessory. If you bought like an i5, the base level Surface Book last year, and you now you're in, in the market for a discrete GPU, you, I would love to have the option to pay maybe $1,000 to get that performance base as opposed to having to buy a whole new laptop. So 
This is not the Surface Book 2. It seems like it's a stopgap upgrade. They're exploring new ways, new ways to take advantage of the split design of the clipboard and the base. Uh, but we'll really have to wait till next year until Microsoft releases a full sequel to the Surface Book. And that's rumored to be the first half of next year. We'll have to wait for that. I'll be eagerly awaiting that. I have no regrets using the Surface Book over my past year, but a little disappointed about the offering for this holiday season. You'll find more reviews on Tested. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Bye.